Cardiac arrest. Yeah. CPR started on scene. Hello, good So we've got a really sick guy coming. So he's got some air trapped that actually collapses the lung and can push the heart over to the other side. So that's a that's a life-threatening condition. 49-year-old, she was cutting down this tree and it's fallen onto her. She's completely transected her pancreas. Right eye. My family. We've said our goodbyes this morning. We're hoping to achieve a cure. Worst case scenario is that when you go back and tell them that it was stuck everywhere, we couldn't do anything. We've got a stabbing to the chest coming into recess. Possible AF, possible AF. Yeah. Hello, recess. 90% SATs on 80% post RSI, is it? Blood products en route to you. How many? That's grand. So we've got a really sick guy coming um, who has come off his motorbike at speed. At scene, he had a nasty right pneumothorax um, peri-arrest, so they've actually decompressed him at scene. They gave him blood products on the way because his blood pressure was that bad. He'll be a transfer by air. George, so put the phone call up now. Yeah, let's put it out now so that we're all ready. So he's got some air trap where it shouldn't be. That actually collapses the lung and can push the heart over to the other side so it doesn't beat very well. So that's a, that's a life-threatening condition. Are you able to see about a helicopter? Because we've still not had an ETA for this helicopter. On sea, the ambulance crew have actually had to decompress his chest, so they will have put a needle in or made a hole to make sure that he doesn't have a cardiac arrest at sea, so he's critically ill. He will be a high-category trauma. It's a helicopter crew trauma arriving at 1940. It's nearly his birthday as well. Not the best, not the best birthday present, is it? Let's be honest. That sounds like a helicopter to me. Roma call is here. Close there for me, okay? I'll just get that. Steady. 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 Lovely. We can just get him across on our bits. Yeah, sure. And the truck's in the 40%. Keep nice and quiet for the handover now, please. OK, so this is Danny. Um, Danny's 40 years old. At 1 o'clock this afternoon, he's on a motorbike in North Wales and he's um, lost control of his motorbike probably reasonably fast considering his injuries. His injuries are uh, top to bottom, so he's got multiple rib fractures on uh, the right hand side. He's got bilateral hema pneumothoraces, pneumothorax, and he's got a pneumomediastinum, um, and he's also got a number of spinal fractures. He's um, been intubated and ventilated. He's got bilateral chest drains in. He's had two units of blood, which is own neg blood on the scene initially. Thanks you very much. Any questions? Okay. So we'll get that primary survey done though, yeah, and then we will uh, go from there. Okay, we'll probably repeat this gas now. Nick is immobilised. Yeah. So the surgical emphysema, the front of the chest, going okay. down all the way. Both sides. Both sides. Okay. Left-sided chest drain. Yeah. Right side chest drain, which is big one. So he's got some air trapped in his chest, so his lungs have collapsed both sides. That's a life-threatening condition. We essentially need that air to get out of the space that it's in. And he's got two chest drains in. They went in just to try and get some of that air out and allow the lung to reinflate. So let's get him covered up and warm. Let's get those... You're happy A end, aren't you? You're all good. So from a B perspective, let's get those drains connected to underwater seals, please. Thanks, Sunil. Ventilated with equal bilateral air injury and 40% oxygen, and okay. he's saturating 99. Yeah. Just got a drop in those sats, guys. Did you take that TXA over? Have you got the second infusion running? 
Because yeah, he's yeah. a bit unstable. So it's just mesh ram null infusion running. So you've got mesh ram null infusion running already, yeah. Just, just don't expect him to be behaving like this at the moment, so. So I'm not convinced by the... Um, his blood pressure's still shit and he's not on much, is he? You almost have to act like a detective. Even a slightly lower blood pressure could mean that they've got serious injuries that aren't visible. Um, we need to find them. Could be there's something that's actively bleeding. So I will sort a rescan out, OK, but if you need to do anything with him now... But let me just go and sort that. Call radiology, Reg. Hi, radiology. Hi, yeah, sorry to bother, it's only Di. Um, I'm TTL, the, the trauma's arrived. I think we need to rescan him, love. He's, um, he's just, he's, un okay. yeah, he's unstable. I'm worried there's ongoing bleeding is my issue. Didn't report any active bleed. They didn't report any active bleed, but he's dropped his, um, his blood pressure's really saggy, really saggy. For, for the injuries they've reported, he shouldn't be this bad. There's something not right. We're going to need to bring this trauma that came in back round. He's just too unstable for what they've said. We're just attaching the underwater seals when they're on. Can we come round? Is that all right? Thanks, Emil. OK, I'm just giving to 50 ml so over say line now, guys. Right then, so we're going to go round to scan. Just in a bit. So we don't normally rescan if they've been transferred in, but we're just a bit worried with him because his blood pressure is very saggy, and just with the injuries that we can see from that CT, we wouldn't really expect him to be behaving like this. So if we just rescan him now, just to make sure there's not any ongoing bleeding or anything, um, and then react to that if we need to. Sometimes it takes time for any other injuries to declare themselves, really, so sometimes you won't see things till a bit later on. Obviously, he can't tell us he's asleep. He needed to go to sleep to help his breathing. He can't tell us whether he's got ongoing pain or things have changed. Um, so we just have to be very eagle-eyed with his observations and his blood results and just see if there's anything um, giving us any clues to anything that's that's underlying. I'm going to stay anyway. I'll, yeah. I'll wait at resource thanks to be back there. Yeah, perfect. All right, Alan, thank you. On the way in in the ambulance, he, they gave him blood because he's had a couple of episodes of dropping his blood pressure. Yeah. There is um, diffuse consolidation mm -hmm. throughout, which is probably <laughs> contusions. There is also more worrying. There is looks like pneumomediastinal yeah. and pneumopericardium. There's so much air still visible outside the lung. We were hoping that that drain was working in the respect that it was actually taking that air out of the way so the lung could expand, and unfortunately it's not. On top of that, we can just see so much blood within the lung tissue itself, so um, that's going to give us much more of an explanation as to why he's struggling with his blood pressure. We'll take him back to resource now. We're going to reinsert another drain. Being a trauma team leader, you've just got to be that one step ahead. We always have to deal with what's worst first. At the moment, the threat to his life is the chest injury. We can see from his observations that he's still struggling. So what my colleague is going to do now is he's going to insert another drain into the right side of the chest. Because we're concerned about the, the pneumothorax becoming under tension. When the lung collapses and the rest fills with air, it changes the pressures within the chest. And that means that it can push the heart over to the other side of the chest the heart becomes really squashed on the other side, so it just can't pump effectively, and that can cause a cardiac arrest. It's a real serious life-threatening injury. We know he's in danger of that happening, so we're gonna get that drain in now. Finding with a stitch, leave it loose. 
So when the nurse taking the drain, just stick it out and close the cavity. With the amount of contusion that we've seen for him, that's well over three quarters of that lung that is not able to work. So that has a huge impact on his ability to be able to oxygenate the blood that's coming through. It just, it's just not working. So his lung capacity has dropped significantly to probably about a third, if not less, at the moment. Right now, for the next 24 hours, it's just about optimizing him and giving him the best chance of survival. Hello, Risa Stoke. A bit of Jesus. Hope he should well settle. Um, but like I say, I've got I've got the general surgeon here as well. Dehydrated, diabetic, third speech, headache. Right, so you've put out the trauma call. Yeah. That's another one that's going to go to Red. Can you let Red know about, please? Um, new onset AF, temper 38. Yeah. Please pop your wristband on. Right. Have you got any allergies? Uh, penicillin. Penicillin. Okay, I'll just grab you a red wristband as well. Thank you. I uh, have rashes. Rashes. Okay, that's fine. I'll just make sure you've got your allergies off first. You know, I'm so used to giving this to patients, and now I, I've got to put it on myself. <laughs> I've got to work, walk in the patient's uh, shoes now, eh? <laughs> what do you do for a living? Are you I'm a nurse. I'm a dialysis. I'm on the place. I work on dialysis. So you're getting like the opposite experience. I know. Yeah, I know. I see your origin now. So Rita has uh, got a large kidney cancer, uh, which is growing into one of her veins. Uh, and today we are planning to take her left kidney out. Kidney cancer can spread to other parts of the body and can become incurable, which is why it becomes very critical to treat it as early as possible. This tumor is life-threatening for Rita. So that's why this, this operation is a high-stick operation. Hi there, morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Gold. Morning, Rita, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All set for this? All set. Any questions you want to ask? When can I return to work for you? Can... <laughs> this is typical of a health professional, you know? So I think the kidney is quite large, even though we are trying to do keyhole surgery. Uh, the cut which we will have to make to take the kidney out will be probably that big. All right, Dita, then I would see you now in operating theatre. Okay, I'll see you there. See you in theatre. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. let's go. My life revolves around my work, my grandchildren and my uh, family. Yeah. And we've said our goodbyes yesterday and this morning. They're already grieving, you know. So I've got to stay strong for them. Kidney cancer has a tendency to draw blood vessels from everywhere. So when there's a, such a large kidney cancer, even more blood is flowing through it. There's a serious risk of catastrophic bleeding. When I say catastrophic, I mean patient dying on table. Rita, you've just got a medicine going in now. Might make you feel a little bit drowsy. It's just you will start feeling a bit dizzy in a minute, all right. By removing the kidney, we're hoping to achieve a cure. Yeah. The worst case scenario is that we go in and the cancer is fixed to so many vital organs that it can't be taken out. And that is really devastating for any patient. Gone into an operation hoping for a cure from the cancer, and you go back and tell them that it was stuck everywhere, we couldn't do anything. Starting. The first thing is make the cut so that we can put hand in and out. So there we go. So this is a device called hand port, and it makes the opening wider. I can now put my hand in and out. Now, so that the air doesn't leak, this disc goes on the top. 
which allows my hand to go in and out without air leaking. As soon as the camera goes in, I'm apprehensive, because no matter how much we have known before from the scan, I now want to see for real what it looks like. Oh. Gas back on, please. That's the camera. Top lights off, please. So at the moment, we've got two holes, one for my hand, one for the camera. I want to make one more hole for another instrument to go in. Ten, 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 ten. ten. So this is what I was doing, protecting when he put the camera line, and that goes in there. Now all these blood vessels that you see, that's all those extra blood vessels on the cancer. That's the, those are the blood vessels that are all feeding the tumor. We know from the scan that it is cancerous, and, it, and, and the feel is hard and abnormal. We have to detach the kidney from the surrounding organ but the tumor is so large that it has come close to everything. It's very close to a blood vessel, which supplies the small bowel. And there are very rare complications of injuring that artery. And if you do that, you, you have a dead patient, really. Margin of error is small. I make it sound dramatic, but that is actually the case. Is it a trauma call? Just going to fill a risk or something. Yeah. This one I think we ought to look at in four then. Can we have another four to please to green resource? Thank you. Yeah. Appropriate invitation. Hello, resource. Yeah, hi, it's Vicky, one of the ED consultants. I'm on for trauma this evening. Um, I have just had a phone call from Leighton Hospital um, about a 49 year old female. She was cutting down this tree and it's fallen onto her. Um, it sounds like it's probably landed on her abdomen. Got her images up on screen now. If you want to come into resource to have a look. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye. What we're concerned about is she's completely transected her pancreas, but she's got quite a large uh, liver laceration because she dropped her blood pressure just before she was being transferred. There's a possibility of bleeding around the liver as well. She might need to go straight to surgery. Um, Anna, there's this one coming across from Leighton. Um, yeah. The tree's fallen on her. We know we've got an injury to her abdomen and she then has suddenly started dropping her blood pressure. It's urgent that we identify any bleeding point and treat that quickly. Left untreated, that could kill her. The injury happened about 1.30 this afternoon. She was cardiovascularly stable up until probably an hour or so ago um, and then dropped her blood pressure down to 75 systole. So we've asked them to rapidly get her across here. Um, the concern would be is actually has she also got an artery, an aorta injury? as well, um, that just wasn't picked up on first imaging. Are we all set up from cannulation or that sort of point of view? Yes. We've obviously got a changing picture here and we want to know whether there's an injury uh, that we've missed and potentially a bleeding vessel. OK, fine. All right, we're not going to fall. Okay, just rolling you towards me, nice and steady. Okay, nice and slow. Okay, everyone got everything? No, not caught on any belt or anything. Okay. All right, then. Ready, steady, slow. Okay. Right. Shall we get some hand over then? Okay. This is Mrs. Wong, Wen Wong, a yep. forty-eight-year-old lady uh, in the area working. She's come from Lightning Crew. She was cutting down a tree earlier on with a chainsaw. The trunk's fallen onto the patient and pinned her to the floor for a number of minutes. Okay. She's had a CT. Yep. Um, a CT showed that she's got liver lacerations and pancreatitis transection. Um, her blood pressure did drop. She's had two bags of blood. She's on a second unit now. So. Sorry, okay. can we just add, sorry. Uh, she did state that she was a little bit short of breath 
earlier, um, and she did state she was in a little bit of pain on the ambulance. Okay. Couldn't give any morphine because obviously her blood pressure was so low. Yes. OK, fabulous. Right, Claire, do you want to start having a little look? Yeah. I'm just going to have a quick feel of your tummy. Warm, well perfused. got a strong radial pulse. Can you just tell me where it hurts? It's okay. You've got uh, all over. OK. Any pain in your hips at all? Mm. No. Just going to have a press? Sleep? A little bit. There's no pain in your hips? I'm just going to have a look at your lower legs, OK? She's tender. Tender all, all over. All the tummy, yes. She's quite kind of got... Any specific region of ours that's worse? Just here. Just here, yeah. Claire, would you be able to request CT Angio? CT Angio, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Uh, I've already given the heads up to okay. the radiology reg, yeah. but um, yeah, we need CT Angio. Oh, just abdomen or, ab or chest? Do chest abdomen. Chest abdomen. Um, uh, so it'll be a code code. Um, yeah. All right. Looks All right. like you have some significant injuries in your tummy, people. And when there's a case that you will need to go to theatre because you might might be bleeding from some point. The operation thing, if I... I I'm not telling you anything because I don't know what kind of operation we're going to have yet. I need to tell my family. Have you got your mobile phone? Shall we see how the scan is and then I tell my family? Yeah. We are just going to go round for another scan of your tummy, OK? All right, to see um, what's going on in there. All right. We know at this point that she's quite unstable. So if on this CT scan we see that there is active bleeding, we will certainly be thinking about going straight to theatre. She's got a combination of very nasty injuries, any one of which could potentially kill her. She's got a reasonable amount of pain, obviously, all around her abdomen and things. So we're just going to get you across onto our CT scanner. You don't need to do anything, OK, because you're on a special mattress. Thank you. Sorry? The right eye. No, no, no. You're in the right place, OK? All right. Sorry. OK, ready, steady, move. We, we can't sit you up, you've got to stay completely flat oh. at the moment, I'm afraid. Okay. All right. The CT scan will tell me whether or not there's a specific injury and that will hopefully give us the information as to whether or not there is something now actively bleeding and causing her blood pressure to drop. Breathe in and hold your breath. So, you know, I, I've already spoken to you about the story, haven't I? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. The pancreas will need surgical intervention. There were some locules of air um, yeah. around as well. It's a large liver injury. Uh, Aorta looks OK. Aorta looks OK. OK. Yeah. So it's, and there's nothing actively bleeding or anything for IR. Ready, steady. We know from the immediate report that, that there is no active bleeding. However, she has still obviously got lots of potentially catastrophic injuries. We are going to meet the consultant surgeon back in recess and we will um, get an opinion from them about going straight to theatre. She's got a couple of rib injuries, so she's got uh, a fifth and sixth right rib fracture. Um, yeah, non-displaced. L1 and to L4 right transverse uh, process okay, fractures. Oh, uh, mm, it's expanded. So that is, yeah, yeah agreed. Given her current physiology, lack of blood control and lack of abdominal size, at the moment she just needs a place of safety, doesn't she, where she's... Yeah, she need an ITU yeah. bed. Right, we're going to sort that. So we've just been looking at your scans. We've potentially three injuries here. Okay, so the first one is your liver. It's got a big blood clot in it. So you've given it a hell of a whack and there's a big bruise. But at the moment, the bruise all seems to be contained inside the liver and it hasn't yet had an opportunity to bleed outside the liver. And we, sh we shouldn't have to do anything with that 
at this current time. The second injury is to your pancreas glands, okay? Now, ideally, we'd normally manage that with an operation. But don't forget, I've just told you the liver, we don't want to manage with an operation. So it gives us a bit of a conundrum. We're not planning on an operation at the moment. Now, I can't say that things won't change and you may need an operation, but at the moment, okay, the best thing to do Wait is keep the bleeding inside. Because as soon, as soon as we open your tummy, okay, you, we lose the pressure effect of your tummy and it might just turn something that's a contained bruise into a free bleed. Well, it is not bleeding. It's bled, Stop. but we don't think it's currently bleeding. I don't think you should consider this as a small injury. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know. So we've got a few bits and pieces to sort out. And then we're going to try and find you a high level monitored bed so we can keep a close eye on you. But you need to be somewhere that you're very visible and we've got lots of monitoring. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Pleasure. See you in a bit. Thank you. So there's probably a bit of room for some analgesia. Oh, definitely. So, as well as the calcium, can we also have um, a litre of Hartman's, please? So we know that there's no active bleeding. However, she's got a pancreas that is in two parts. That's going to need careful observation over the next few hours. We've got general surgeons here that are well versed in managing these potentially catastrophic injuries, which could be life threatening. Your set resource going to have? She's obvious closed femur, obvious closed humerus. When they've been to CT, into ambulance assessment, yeah. have you got a patient that can move out? Because there's a space around the back now for another one. Happy there's nothing, no big active bleed from the head. Let's finish in here. So this is okay to take, yeah? Oh, what's that? That's the layer, isn't it? When we take a left kidney out, there are a lot of important structures. For example, pancreas, spleen, aorta, and we want to avoid them. We don't want to venture inside them, causing unnecessary bleeding. This tumour is life-threatening for Rita, and uh, we have to remove it safely. That's cancer, that's pancreas, and these are all those big blood vessels, extra blood vessels that we were talking about. Why? If I go in there, I'll have a blood bath. When there's a, such a large kidney cancer, even more blood is flowing through it. Altogether, we have five litres in our body, and two litres of that is flowing through this kidney. And if bleeding happens, it can be a very serious risk. It's OK. The next thing we want to go to is to go to the blood supply of the kidney. So that was there. So this is the big vein. And right behind it, I can actually feel the artery. Quite a big artery, actually. A very big artery. When you remove the kidney, uh, you expect the renal artery in the big tumors like Rita's to be nearly double the size, but this is bigger than what I thought. It has to come. It's not pulsating, so I have to no. Okay, so that's gone there. Okay, so there's tumor here. Mavericks. <laughs> so that's, that's. We have done the most difficult part of the operation now. So, what we check normally is that there is no more bleeding in that area, and a blood clot. Right away. So, that's the pipe. 
which you call aorta. There was the artery which has been clipped. There was the vein which has been clipped. A spleen, pancreas, and this is where kidney used to live. It's empty now. The bowel will fall there and occupy the space. This is a tumor which we are about to take out. Let's see, shall it, shall it come? It is the size of a small honeydew melon. Does not look nice. I mean, she's very lucky that it has grown to this size and has actually has not spread. So uh, she might feel a lot better after this, hopefully. I have to say we prepared for the worst and we have ended up, thankfully, in a nice, in a nice scenario for me too. Eight minutes, okay, eight minutes. Yeah, he's reverted, you can go. Two, three. Okay. Hello. Hello, Risa Stoke. Medical. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'll put it out there. Can you call the IT around, please? This guy, he's a heat stroke over the finish line of a half marathon. His temperature at scene was 42 degrees. GCS is wavering between 10 to 14. Lots of people do endurance events. If you push your body hard enough, there is a small risk of some people developing a complication known as heat stroke, and basically that's where the, the body can get to a stage where it has difficulty losing heat, and then you basically cook from the inside. All right, Chris, we're with the doctors now, OK? It can be a real life-threatening pathology. All we've got from him is him saying Chris, but there's been no other information that he's meant to give to us. No, no. I think one of his friends is coming to meet him here. Amazing. So now that he was about probably a quarter of a mile away from the finish, seemed to have an altered unsteady gait. One of the runners has helped him kind of sit down on a bench and then lowered him to the floor, uh, and as they kind of gradually got worse, actively cooled down with ice packs in axillas and a bilateral groin. Okay, three, one, two, three. There we go, Chris. Well done. Good man. Perfect stuff. Chris, can you lift this arm up for me? Is your name Chris? Sometimes your body can spasm or get contorted, and that's just one of those indicators that they could be suffering from a life-threatening blood salt level. And it's something that you need to kind of get on, diagnose fairly quickly and resolve. They're very high risk of getting cardiac arrhythmias, causing their heart to stop and suffer cardiac arrest. He's not got IV access or anything, has he? No. It's really important that we get IV access so we can start cooling him down with cold fluids, start rehydrating him, start replacing some of his key salts. Just need to pop a little needle in your arm, OK? So we can try and prevent his condition getting any worse. Uh, can you get some RSI drugs out as well, please? He's starting to seize a little bit. So we'll set up for an intubation if he gets worse. Because if he does start seizing, and this, he can develop all sorts of complications. He's pushed through, his body's telling him to slow down, and if you choose to ignore those and keep pushing yourself, for example, when you're doing a half marathon or a marathon, then obviously your body will start shutting down and uh, it can only compensate so far, and then things will start to go wrong. Sometimes that's a direct result of heat stroke. We need to continue the cooling process with him. Also, we need to start doing some real kind of key bedside tests. Well, I need ECG in here. Yeah, what do you find ECG? OK, yeah. Patient's mum's now here, giving us some details. No known allergies, no previous medical problems. Was she at the race? She's come from home. She's not too sure what's happened. OK, we're going to pop her into the relative yeah, here. Yeah. 
Chris. What's your mum called? Chris? Chris, are you ever tell me what your mum's called? We have noticed some consequences of his high temperature, which includes some acute damage to his heart. His heart tracing has got some abnormalities on it. Some of his blood tests show that his heart's been under tremendous strain. Even though we're several hours after his collapse, he's still quite hot at over 38 degrees. So we need to continue the cooling process with him uh, and then make sure he's not going to suffer any complications of uh, organ failure. Uh, just excuse me. So Chris, we're just gonna try and keep cooling you down a bit. All right, we just have to put some ice around you, okay? Chris, can you hear me? Cool. Yeah. Can you relax? Well done. Let's Let put you this under your head properly. Right. You just rest down. He does need a prolonged period of observation for at least two, three days uh, while we continue to stabilize him and, and make sure he doesn't suffer any further complications. Okay, how long will you be? Okay, and now you're coming by land. We'll see you when you get here. Thank you. Bye. Okay, we've got a road traffic accident, 60 to 65 miles an hour in a white van. Front passenger has hit a jackknifed vehicle in, that was in front of them. When you've got something coming off the motorways, you've got no real idea what you're going to face because because of the speeds usually involved there's a potential for quite serious injury right i'm going to brace this side of you and we're going to take out your left side all right there we go what's your name fella it's connor connor oh yeah i'm anthony one two three right we're just going to hear all about you now all right connor 26th male Vehicle in front of Jack Hunt, and they then come across into the lane. That's the one towing the cows That's in the, the trailer. That's the one the cows, yeah. The trailer's then come up onto the bonnet of Connor's van, and it's decimated the front of the van. C spine pain, C4, C5, yeah. and some left pain in his left shoulder. Yeah. Dad is following in, in another vehicle as well. Basically. He's driving. He was driving. I'm going to get this collar off you. Yeah, we don't want you to move your head and neck around too much, though, all right? Yeah. OK, let's ease that out. OK. So I'm going to have a little poke and a prod at the back of your shoulder. Any pain here? No. OK, good lad. Any pain here? No. OK. What about down the middle? There, yeah. There? Yeah. OK. You're clearly having a fair amount of difficulty shifting the neck around. Yeah. And that just always makes me a tiny bit worried when there's been a decent smack mm -hmm. that there might be something I'm not seeing on the X-ray that I'll pick up on a CT. Yeah. You're playing for reasonably high stakes in the neck and the back if you get it wrong. So I'm just um, I'm obviously not not feeling like gambling much this morning. Worry's always dialed up a little bit more if you've got a very high impact injury. If something at motorway speed has hit something stationary, if he's had an impact in a van at 60 or 70 miles an hour and a sudden deceleration, there may be other injuries that he's not complaining about at the minute because they're not so sore. Has he got some form of mild spinal cord injury and a broken neck? So that's fairly high stakes for him high neck injuries, even if it's just an isolated high neck injury, can be both life changing and indeed life ending if they're high enough. I have his dad outside. Okay. He's obviously also had the same mechanism of injury. Yeah. Eight. Jones has got one in there and there. Eight centimetres. He's in there, I'll put him in eight. I knew you'd be there all right. So you're out with that. I'll pop him in eight. His dad's here now. 
overdone on here. Nothing too bad out. There's little bits of glass absolutely everywhere. You've got a nice fairy dust of that. So when you're shifting your head around, no grief at all. No, no. Really none. No. Done quite well to avoid that. <laughs> Do the rest of the family know where you are? Not yet. Wondered if you'd phone them from the side of the road or anything. I tried to, but we found it was covered in paint. I don't think it works. So. Okay. Any pain? No. Any pain? No. Good. Nothing on the legs. No, nothing. Well, I think that actually is going to be fine. Yeah. And I think you are as well. Yeah. yeah. Aside from you know. Yeah. Looking like you've been in an accident. <laughs> In Connor's case, and my concern was that he um, was struggling to move his neck despite an apparently normal x-ray. Some of the time that can be because there is an injury, particularly to a ligament, leaving the spine unstable. It's all looking a nice smooth curve and each bone's looking more or less the same size as the one above it and more or less the same shape as the one above it as well. Um, and the only vague thing I can see is just a tiny little something there. We'll see what the um, experts say. So I just need their say so and I can sit him up hopefully. No, though. <laughs> that just from the glass. Yeah, it's all in the air. The truck and the trailer just ended up in front of us because there was lorries next to us. And they just ended up in the... It was like in a very lighter. And I, that landed on our bonnet. As it come across the motorway, away, it landed straight on top. That was left of the van. Extremely lucky. young lady coming in with a suspected pelvic injury from an RTC. Not sure, guys, we may go straight to CT, but we're setting up ready for any injury, really. Just mindful about whether we're going to have to deal with some catastrophic bleeding. Stabbing's landed. Ready, steady. He was stabbed on the left side of his chest, going into cardiac arrest. It's a really significant chest injury. He has got a significant mortality risk. Now, you have an aneurysm, right? There are risks with this procedure. If something goes wrong, you know, the patient may not survive. 999 Critical Condition returns in two weeks. And if you or someone you know has been affected by anything you've seen in tonight's program, find information and support at channel5.com slash helplines. Next tonight, an 11-year-old hit by a van needs urgent care. It's new Ambulance Code Red in just a moment.